Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna to show you how to offload service checker data for service checker four, where to find it, what it looks like, and all the intricacies of something like that. I have a lot of people ask me and reach out to me recently asking where can I find this? How do I send it? What format do I need it in? And there's a lot of different files here that we're kind of dealing with. So let's just dive in. So everybody knows what this is. This is service checker type four. If I double click on the program, it's gonna open it up and turn it on. Usually this is on your desktop. Hopefully it's on your desktop. And it looks something like this, right? We have this beautiful record, play, data transfer, customer data. Now, this is the program. And in here, I can hit play or I can hit data transfer. And if I click data transfer, you're gonna get kind of like this screen here. The left-hand side is all the data that is in my laptop that I have recorded through Service Checker, right? This is all the Service Checker recordings that my Service Checker or my laptop has recorded at a whole, right? Now, we're going to get to this part here really quickly about, you know, how do I actually import that data? But let's look at where that data is actually stored on your computer, because this is the hardest part with Service Checker 4. Service Checker 3, it was really easy to get to. It was in the program files. Right, so here I'm gonna show you some super top secret Kalos data here. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so if we look at this, right, this is me clicking File Explorer on my laptop. From there, I am going to go to this PC, right? Every computer is going to have this PC. In this PC, I'm gonna to go to my C drive because that's where it puts it. And here you can see I have Service Checker 3 data. That's not what we're looking for. And a lot of people are gonna go here to Program Files. That's not where it's at either. Service Checker 4 is one of those things where they said, let's make this really, really difficult to find. So here we go. We've got Windows Explorer. I've gone to my, this PC, right? Down here in the bottom left. I've gone to, now I'm gonna go to Users on my C drive. After I go to Users, I'm going to select my profile for this laptop. So when you log into your laptop, it's gonna ask you, what profile do you wanna get onto? And if you're with a large mechanical company, that mechanical company is gonna have a bunch of different profiles, but one for your IT. You want your specific account for that laptop. This is the account that I use when I record service checker data on. This is the account for my laptop as a whole. So I'm gonna click on my name now. In here, there is going to be a list of stuff. Now, this is where it gets tricky because there's actually a file that you have to unhide to find it to get to the data and where it saves a service checker program. So when we click on view, right, I can go here and I can go through this list here and it shows you extra large icons. You guys are pretty familiar with something like this. Now, this is the newer version of Windows. If you have the older version of Windows, you would have to right click, right, show more options, and then you would change your view here. Now, for the Windows version that I have now, I can click the view here in the top left-hand side, and I'll just highlight that for you really quick. View, right? And in here, it's going to give me a list. I'm gonna go down to the very bottom where it says show. And in show, I'm gonna click show hidden files. You see, if I take away hidden files, one of them disappears. Now, if I'm gonna go back and show, I'm gonna click hidden items. So I have to unhide folders. Why does Windows hides folders? I have no idea. Don't ask me. I'm not an IT guy. With unhiding folders, you're going to find that this folder pops up, app data. This is where Service Checker 4 program saves all of its data and also its program files. I double click on app data. I then go to local, which is at the top. And if you haven't been following along, this route of processes is at the top. I go to this PC. I go to C drive. I go to users. I go to my name, I go to app data, which I have to unhide, and then I go to local. In local, this is all the programs that are hidden inside of here. And one of them, ta-da, checker four. I double click on checker four, and it's gonna take me into all the things that I might have downloaded for that checker four program. In here, last but not least, D3 data. Now, this is a long way to go to get to all of these data files that I've saved on my laptop. Now again, everything you see in this folder is the same exact thing you see here on the left-hand side of my service checker program. This is where it pulls that data into the service checker program, right? This is where the files are located on my laptop. Why is that important? Because if I need to come in here and for some reason I can't transfer this data over using these arrows that you see in my service checker program, I can manually go and retrieve that data set from here. Now, I get it. The names are very confusing on the left-hand side. However, I go off of the timestamp, 
and the file size if I'm trying to find something specific that my data might serve over to my flash drive. Okay, so now you know where it's at. And the easiest thing to do here, guys, is to go up one, right click on this folder, and then we're going to go to show more options, and I'm going to create a shortcut. Ta-da! There it is. Perfect. Then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that shortcut and I'm going to put it on my desktop. Why is that also important? Because now I don't have to click through every single one of these folders to get to where I need to go. Now all I have to do is go to my desktop, double click on this, and guess what? It pulls up on my other screen, but pulls up all the service checker data that I need. Now, there's two ways to import data into your laptop. There is through this folder where you can drag and drop it after you download it on your laptop, or you can go and find it in your C drive here in your downloads. So this is how you pull data in. Again, you can drag and drop it out of your downloads into the folder I just showed you that we made a shortcut for, or you can go in here and you can click on your C drive. Now you'll find that if I click on the C drive directly, it says permission denied. It doesn't really mean that. It just means that I didn't click in the right spot. We're not clicking the folder. We're clicking the arrow to see the folders within the C drive. And I'm going to go the same path. You're going to notice downloads is not automatically in this list of, of folders. So what I have to do is I go C drive. I go users. I go Roman, right? And in my name, under my profile, I will find downloads. Now I can click the drop down arrow and look for a specific folder that I have, or I can just click downloads as a whole. This is all the service checker data that is currently in my downloads folder that I've downloaded to my laptop with names, with system numbers, and then on the right hand side, if we scroll all the way over, file sizes, number of data points, how much recording time, when the recording time started, Again, this is how you select the data, find the data that you downloaded, you click it, and then you click the left arrow button there, F2. Now I've already moved it over, so it's gonna say, hey, you've already downloaded this into service checker folder. Do you really wanna do this again? And I say, no, I don't, you're right, I'm, I'm just messing around, right? This is how you take data and you put it in. And the same thing is in reverse. So if I wanna take something and I wanna put it in my downloads folder to find it later, I can click on something and I can move it over. And you'll notice here on the right-hand side, now it pops up. Now, if I wanted to go over to my downloads folder, I could, and I could locate this data. So I could go to my downloads, and in there is going to be that .das file that I just moved over, right? That's exactly what I have now. So remember, when we're moving data, it's important to, one, make sure that it's not in a zip file because I can't open zip files inside my service checker program. It has to be an unzipped folder or file to get to it. And then from there, I'm going to move it over here on this list. Now, let's say I download a .das file because that's what this is. Let's, let's just cover that topic really quick. What is the file format for raw service checker data? Now, you're gonna get a lot of guys who are like, okay, raw service checker data is CSV files. Well, no, technically it's not. CSV files are an exported file from Service Checker program. A raw file format is .das, right? You'll see here in the type section that it says right here, .das. This is a DAS file. It has to be a .das file in order to import that data into Service Checker. If it is not in this format and it is a CSV, you cannot pull it into Service Checker, right? You would have to look at it either in a macro sheet, which Daikin has, or through actual Excel program and go through the data line by line. This is what we call the raw data from Service Checker, not CSV data, which is something that Service Checker can export. But again, the problem with CSV files is it is not the full set of data. It is a bunch of snippets from different categories of the data. If I take a, and let's just, let's just go, let's just go all the way in. We're already here, guys. Why not just go all the way? So I hit cancel and I want to go here and I want to go play. Okay. Let's see. I select a customer from today. Sure. And I hit CSV data output instead of display operational data. Now, if I click display operational data, I will look at it in service checker as if I was there. If I hit CSV data output, it's going to say, hey, do you want to do all of it? Maybe a small snippet. Do you want a header print? Yes, I want a header. And I hit OK. And what does it do? It asks me, 
where do you want to put this? Let's say that I'm a maniac and I want to put it on my desktop. And I'm going to name this, you know, data. Because, you know, I don't have any of that on my desktop. And, of course, what does it do? Oh, man, I really love this. It completely vomits all of these little teeny tiny data snippets onto my desktop. What does that look like? Okay, let me just go ahead and grab all these because this is the chaotic way to do it because, you know, we don't like to do things the easy way. We like to do things the hard way. All right, 500 years later, we've got it all. It's chaotic. So this is the same data set that I just showed you on my service checker. Now, you'll see that it takes every single indoor unit and puts it into its own CSV file. LU19 is indoor unit 19. LU18 is indoor unit 18. LU17 is indoor unit 17. This is all the individualized data, including the outdoor unit data. Now, again, you can pull all this into a macro, but that's a whole other video that we're not going to touch today. This is what we call CSV data because, again, it's in a CSV format. And if I double click on it, it'll open up the program. You know, it'll tell me that all these things that I need to subscribe to, you know, Excel, which I'm not going to, but this is the format that that comes in. This is not service checker raw data. This is CSV data. Again, not to be confused with the two. Okay, so exit out of that. All of this is trash. I don't need any of this. Not that I'm not a fan of using CSV data. I like CSV data when there's time and there's, there's you know, I want to go through all that and I want to put it all together. It's great. But again, time and a place. It's not raw data. The raw data that you would send somebody should be a .das file like you just saw. And again, bringing it in is the same way we just showed you before as well. So this is how you get to Service Checker 4 data. This is how you download it. If it's not a .das file, it is not a raw service checker data folder file. I can't import it into my service checker and look at your data, right? If I want to come in here and I want to import it, I can open up the operational data. It will not look like this if you're sending CSV files. You should be sending .das. If it's not .das, then it's not the right folder. Now, you're also going to find when you send service checker data that it comes in two formats, .das, which is the data, and then .dak, which is the customer information. Now, you have to remember that each customer, you put in the name, the location, the area, the information, all of that stuff goes into Service Checker when you set up the profile for the first time. So if you pencil whip it and you just put a bunch of random stuff, you're going to have a hard time understanding what the data is and how to send it and who it is for and all that stuff like that. So the .dak is customer information, .das is the actual data itself. So if you're sending a bunch of people a .dak file, they're not getting the data. They're getting the customer information of the name of the customer, the address, the phone number. That's what that file is, right? You don't need to send that. You can, but you don't need to. Um, you just send the .das file. So that's service checker data, 13 minutes. Sorry it took so long, guys, but you have to unhide the folder, find it there. This is the data that you would copy and paste out of. You don't have to do it in that format. You can always go over to service checker. You can go back, right, data transfer, and I can transfer it to a flash drive. I can transfer it to a folder I create on my desktop. Again, that's through the C drive. I go to users. I select my name or my user account. And then from there, I'll find desktop. I'll find documents. I have downloads. This is where you're going to create your own file folder that says something like this. Service checker data analysis folder, right? Here's a bunch of service checker there. Here's D checker. Here's another service checker folder, right? Create something specific. Here you go. Service checker data. This one's full of data. You know, this is where you want to organize your stuff, save your stuff in specific formats, and then go from there. Okay, I'll quit droning on and on about this stuff, but this is how you find Service Checker data for Service Checker 4. Service Checker 3 is in the program files. It's not that hard to find. This is Service Checker 4. It hides it really well on your laptop. Unhide it. Create a desktop uh, shortcut. And then from there, just transfer your data as much as you want and uh, send me everything you got. So... I'll see you guys on the next one.